From the All-Ireland Final on Sunday, Kevin Nolan. We're also joined by Michael Foley of the Sunday Times and by one of Kevin's local rivals, Meads Keen Ward. You're very welcome, uh, Kevin. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Thank you very much. Nice Let me here. bring you back to that moment just before you kick that point. What was going through your mind? Uh, where's Bernard Brogan? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was actually I actually kicked the game, kicked the score like that against Cork in the league final. Um, and that day I tried to I looked to pass it off and there was no other option on, so I just said I'd, I'd kick the kick it over and just give it a shot really. Um, and then the other the other day I found myself in a lot of space and I just said should I go for it now? Uh, it must be a great feeling though. It is. Um, to win in All Ireland is amazing and for everything that has happened with me the. Scoring a point in the All-Ireland Final and getting man of the match. It's just a, an added bonus to it. And, of course, the birthday the next day. You've had some yeah. week. Yeah. I know. It was, it was brilliant. We went into Merrion Square. I uh, had a crowd of 30, 30, 35,000 people uh, singing me happy birthday. And, you know, just waking up on Monday morning was, it was extra special. I had to pinch myself to make sure it wasn't a dream. Is it true that you turned down a soccer trial with Leicester City uh, on the same day or the same weekend that you were about to play a minor league game with Dublin? Yeah, um, I was involved with St. Joseph's boys and Sally Noggin. Uh, I would have been a, a mainly a soccer player all the way up up to about age 14, 15. Um, and I'd gone over to Blackburn and Leicester on a trial and Leicester had offered me a second trial to go back over again. But uh, I have relations playing with Dunboyne um, in Mead and it, you know, it's just fam having family in Mead and you know, to get a chance to play Dublin against me at any age group uh, is extra special, and I just I had to I had to play that. Um, I so like the way you look at Key and yeah, you know, just know, to kind I of know, say, yeah, hey, yeah. we know about your Wardy. Uh, yeah. Are you glad you did? I have enough back since, to be honest. Um, mm. I was lucky enough to be picked on a uh, under 17s international rule team that went down to Australia. So mm. you know it, lo it went well for me, and everything that happened since, with everything with chemical croaks and DCU, you know, mm. it's been exceptional for me anyway. And there's a long way to go yet, uh, Kevin. Seven minutes to go, four points down. Did you think it was slipping away from you? No. Um, belief would have been the main word. Um, Pat has instilled in us all. You know, we just keep fighting. We sort of ignore the score and the time. Um, we all felt, myself anyway, I felt that we'd get a chance and just, you know, that hopefully we'll take it. Mm. Uh, Losing by two points against Donegal, and we we clawed our way back into it. And, and to win that one was was uh, gave us a lot of belief um, after such a tough game. Um, and then be, to be four points down against Kerry in an All Ireland final, uh, I don't think many teams will have, have done what we did. No, absolutely not. Michael, did you think Kerry had it won? I did. Yeah, I did. I thought with four points up with seven or eight minutes to go, we've seen Kerry close out these games so often oh, over yeah. the years. You, you, you just kind of look at it and you look at the players that were on show. And Kerry were, were playing well as well. It's not like they were hanging on. They were, they were, they were playing well. But, and you know, what, what makes it really special, pe people have made a little bit of a comparison to 82 some in, over the last couple of days. But, I mean, the game still had to be won by Dublin, you know. And, I mean, that's, that's what really, for me, made it a, a, real, a real triumph of belief and conviction and kind of looking at, looking at Dublin on Sunday, I mean, the one thing they really, really needed to have, looking from the outside in anyway, was what Kevin just said there, which was total conviction that they could beat Kerry. Because, yeah. I mean, you see Tyrone, yeah. back to years, Armagh were the same in 2 they just went in, totally believed in the game plan, and, and never seemed to deviate. There was moments in the second half, all right, where maybe it went away from them a little bit, but they were still there, and they gave themselves a shot at the end. At the very end, of course, as you mentioned, Michael, was the pressure kick for Stephen Cluxton. You're well used to taking frees uh, for me, Kian. What sort of pressure? What do you think was going through Stephen Cluxton's mind? Yeah, I don't know. I suppose at that stage of a game, you know, there's, there's so many things going on that it's not a kind of an isolated incident. You know, he's totally focused on the game and this is just another kick. You know, if you, if you brought him in there now, you know, and, uh, you know, it was a cold kick or something like that, it's maybe slightly different. You know, I suppose for him as a goalkeeper, it's, you know, it is different because he has to, you know, jog up the length of the pitch. Mm -hmm. He's not he's kind of involved in the helter-skelter yeah. yeah. of the game. You know, he's not after getting a, a dig a few minutes earlier and he's, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's just totally has to focus on this kick and, and what a kick, you know, it was yeah. just, but there was no doubt, like you weren't. No. I don't no, think he would have had any doubt at all. No, would you? not at all. Like, he's probably the most dedicated lad on the team in a way that, like, he, we'll, we'll, we'll train at 7 o'clock at night he'll be there at 6 o'clock and he'll be practising those mm, kicks. Yeah. Now, maybe a few years ago, you would have had Bernard Brogan and Mossy Quinn taking the free kicks. You know, Clucko probably would have been practising yeah. them, but, you know, the fact that they weren't in the team and, like, to have Stephen kicking balls over the bar and 45s all year, 
you know, we needed that. Yeah, it was something we were missing. He's for been while. incredibly consistent, really. Yeah. Like he's yeah. hardly he's hardly missed a kick well, on the air for you. But that's the thing. Funny. There was an interesting bit of symmetry. Like I mean, his first kick into the canal end. Was it was in a very very similar position to the mm. last kick into the hill, mm. which he missed. He missed the first kick, yeah. Yeah. but he had you know he still what what impressed me was he came up after I think it was for a forty five, mm, and he, he nailed that one. Mm. Yeah, and then yeah. he never looked back. Yeah. And by the end of the game, as you say, when he when he was trotting up, you knew he was going to get it. Did you watch the kick? I did. Uh, just as he was walking up the pitch, I was walking back towards his goal. Just you know, saying to myself, like, please, 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 you know, just <laughs> just hoping, hoping that, um, and thankfully he did. Mm. Tipperary Miners winning their first All Ireland since 1934, Mick. I mean, is that a template? Do you think the way they're using John Evans there? Yeah, look, the, the Tipperary achievement is outstanding, and I mean, it's it's just reward for all the, all the work that's going on down there at a very at a, at a low level. What I mean by low level, like grassroots level, mm. uh, as you say, John Evans, I suppose, is 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 the figurehead. But John himself would be as quick to say, look, there's a load of very good football people in Tipperary, and people forget, I suppose, over the years that there is a great core of football people in Tipperary, in, in South Tip, and in places like Lockmore, a little bit further up. But it's it's a fantastic tribute to David Power as well, who was who was the manager. But obviously, John is John is involved in the coaching capacity, and I mean, it just shows, though, it shows, and I mean, Dublin's win as well shows that you know, with the right attitude, and again, this belief and this kind of application to to the hard graft and everything that particularly in football anything is possible for any county if they apply themselves to it in the right way absolutely well, well done to Tipperary the lads are staying with us we saw two good goals on Sunday and we had some real crackers this year in the football championship we've picked out four of the best would you fancy picking a winner from these still Kildare continue to use the short pass Eamon Caller, chance of a goal, and he stuck it! What a goal! Out in the blue! Oh, what a Eamon goal! Eamon from way out! What about this for a goal? Darren O'Sullivan, then play, then power, he's going! Football. Here, here is Jason McCarthy trying to uh, get away from Bobby Waters. Still, Jason McCarthy. He may well go all the way. Oh boy, he goes all the way. And the defender has driven Dublin further clear here. What a terrific goal that is by Jason McCarthy. Back to Calvin. And the marking is loose on Brian Sheehan. Sheehan for Kerry O'Sullivan. Oh, that was absolutely brilliant. Well, what about that for skill from Darren O'Sullivan? That is wonderful. What a goal. There you have it. Try and pick a winner from that lot. Will it be Eamon Callaghan's long-range finish against the Dubs? Darren O'Sullivan's cracker against Cork? James McCarthy's... The lads will be picking a winner later in the show. But what do you think? You can let us know by emailing Save the Championship. To some degree, I suppose you could say that. I mean, overall, I thought it was a good sort of, I, I call it a good, honest championship. Like, you know, you had some good games, you know, there were some isolated, nice passages of play and so on and so forth. But there was no real classic match. There was no real sort of, uh, you know, fan fantastic story arc, I suppose, for want of a better expression, going, going through it. Some of the provincial championships were good. Uh, you know, some, some of the British championships I, I thought were quite poor. I thought Connacht was, was, was poor this year. I thought the Munster Championship, even Cork Kerry, was to be a big showpiece. And it, it did have drama, but it didn't quite... It was an unusual sort of game. And in the same way, I suppose, the All-Ireland Final, was, while it was a very good game, it, just, it was a good game as, as it was. Oh. The, the finish kind of made it really extra special. Like, and I suppose that, as you said, that kind of translates over to the championship as a whole. Just the way it finished, suddenly we can say that, you know, you've got four different winners of the championship in the last four years, which kind yeah. of suddenly you kind of go... It is a real championship. It puts a different sh yeah. kind of shade on it. Was this the 2011 championship in Watershed, do you think, Ian, in the sense that Dublin are now emerging and possibly Kerry fading? Uh, well, I don't know. I wouldn't like to be writing Kerry <laughs> off just yet. No, but, um, neither am I. I think, uh, <laughs> I think that a lot of teams have kind of improved an awful lot this season or, or continued their improvements, if you know what I mean. I think uh, Kildare have made big strides and Donegal have made huge strides. And, you know, when you go back and you say that there's not too many games that will be remembered, probably the Kildare Donegal game is the one that you'd remember most from the yeah. year. And there was a lot of criticism about it at the time, but perhaps it's a sign of the change in times in football and that people are going to, you know, 
people aren't going to be willing to train for six or eight months of the year and then just go out and go toe to toe with a team that they feel may be better than them and mm. they're not going to play an open style of football they're going to say we have to give ourselves the best possible chance of winning mm. and I suppose the prime example maybe that is the way that Dublin have had to change you know and it's not because they have inferior players it's just because they deemed that that was the best way for them to improve and give themselves a better chance of winning and you're going to see yeah. Everybody really yeah, kind of yeah. adapt to that, I, I would imagine. Um, do you think, Kevin, this team are now capable of, of winning more All-Irelands, or is this it? No, no, we feel and we believe as well that we there are a couple more All-Irelands in us all. Um, just the dedication we've all put in together, you know, it's all just mm. the effort put in by everyone, 1-35. to 35, And even there were some lads who were involved throughout the league and the O'Byrne Cup that, that weren't with us at the end of the year, but all the effort put in throughout the whole year, pre-season, um, up at half six in the morning doing sessions and seven o'clock that night, mm. you know, it all paid off. And uh, thankfully, I was involved with it. You know, come end of the year. Kevin, you're going to love the next question, but it's to Keen Ward. You scored five goals last <laughs> year. Me did against this Dublin team. The fact that Dublin are now All Ireland champions. Do you feel that that's a boost to counties like me? Um, I don't know. It's it's a hard one to judge. I think that. Um, Perhaps in many ways that was a helping hand to Dublin because it. it um, so now you're taking credit for the yeah, All-Ireland. Well, it is. Well, That's it's a new one now. <laughs> well, I think, I, think, I think what it did was it, it actually reinforced um, the players' uh, maybe fate in the methods that the management were trying to impose. You know, if they had gone out and beaten us, maybe you know things would have turned out differently. But they have you know looked at that game and and. You know, it was it was a freak result. Like it was a freak mm. result, but mm. what it did was it was you know there was a lot of hype about it at the time, and it allowed the management to, you know, get complete 100% belief in the system from the players, and they were able to build on yeah. that. I don't know. What it you're kinda, yeah, it, it copper fastened what Dublin had to do, really. Like, mm. and I mean, in fairness, you know, if you take the the, the Kerry result in 09 in combination with the Mead result, I mean, by the end of that, any any egos that were in that panel, I'm sure, were punctured straight away, guys. You know. One, I remember one former player saying to me that no one was asking about All Ireland finals after O'Byrne Cup games. You know, the following January, it was it was down to brass tacks. But I mean, I think like Dub, Dub, Dublin's win. You asked there about me. I, I think it's a fierce boost for all sorts of different teams. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a team that comes to mind for me now is a team like Mayo, who mm -hmm. would say would would have a similar age profile, similar kind of history background, um, similar baggage with a team like Kerry. Um, who, you know, again, you just you just have to kind of put all that stuff aside and say we're, we're just going to go at this, you know. Okay, well, no more than the, hur the football. The hurling championship threw up loads of talking points and some great goals. See if you can pick a favourite from this lot. Thank you, cool. inside to Owen Kelly, dodging this way and that, Kelly still, still it's Kelly, what a goal by Kelly, another for the marvellous Owen Kelly, but this was all about individual brilliance, absolutely superb, it's Joe Canning, back there is Nicky O'Connell, acting as an extra defender, Connell has to stay goal side, Canning is strong, lovely skill by Canning, here comes the shot, oh magic, Absolutely beautiful to watch. Oh, you've got to watch this again. This is just superb. Down for his Alan McQuarrie. Gathering around the danger zone. It's a great ball to Ryan under wire. Oh, bullet! Wonderful pass from Alan McQuarrie. Ryan under wire. Get a rasper. That was unstoppable. The little hand pass into a determined Eddie Brennan. Off he goes, like he's running in Shelburne Park. Hand pass across to Hogan. What a goal! That is quite superb. That's hurling for you. Hurling of the very best. What about that for a possible defining moment? Tough decision. Who would you pick? Would it be? Was it assigned it there? not gone away, or was it indeed uh, the last uh, sting of a dying wasp? Well, I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think the, the kind of legacy of all of Kilkenny's underage work over the last 10 or 12 years that's been going on behind the scenes is that they're never going to be far away. So the last sting of a dying wasp, maybe of a great, great team, like the greatest team we've ever seen, but, you know, it's all relative. I mean, Kilkenny are still going to be a serious force going forward. Mm. Um, I always had a feeling this year that they were going to come back with a little bit extra and you know, coming into the final, if, uh, I felt that they, they would go at the game more or less the way they did, and it was down to whether Tip could could match it or not. And it was just, it was the it was the way it panned out in the day. And that's not to say that Tip Tip will be right back there again next year. I mean, we're basically looking at we're probably looking at the same two again 
this time next year. You know? Well, now that's a precursor to my next question because with Dublin emerging as yeah. a reasonably strong force and other counties good at underage, Clare, Limerick, Galway, is the championship going to even off, do you think? Probably over the course of the next few years, I'd say, yeah. I mean, in the short term, i.e. next year, you're probably, you, you'll be hoping that Dublin maintain their progress because they were fantastic this year. And if they, if they continue on the way they're going, I'd see them winning in All-Ireland in the next two or three years. Cork will have new management, so they're going to they're gonna have a bit more impetus. As you mentioned there, Clare. Clare are a team that you'd be looking for maybe in two to three, four years, yeah. coming back to where they were back, at, back in the mid to late 90s. In the short term, you'd be thinking typically, Kenny, obviously Galway have an awful lot of questions to answer, but, you know, with respect to Galway, they've had questions to answer now for a long time. So it's kind of as you were, really. Kevin, I know you're obviously friendly with a lot of the Dublin hurlers. Do you think your victory on Sunday will give them a boost as well? Yeah, I, I, everything. Um, all the underage success as well. Not success, but the achievements so far uh, to date, you know, with the minors, both football and hurling in the, in the final. Uh, Under-21 hurling team, unfortunately, losing. Um, and then just even the, the league success with the, the senior hurlers will hopefully just drive, you know, just encourage kids to get involved in all, all mm. the GA sports. Yeah. Michael, if you had a fiver to spare, uh, who would you tip for the 2012 All-Ireland Hurling Championship? In a word. I usually don't have a fiver to spare, I usually have a two euro <laughs> coin, and that's usually for the parking meters. Uh, for the 2012, I would, um, I'd be leaning towards tip actually, I think they're going to come back with a growl this, or, you know, next year mm. and I think they've got some fantastic players, it's, it's it, you know, like Kilkenny who had a fantastic brilliant generation of players, they turned them into a team, that's, that's, that's the challenge for tip now is to create a team that will endure. So a Corkman tipping Tipperary for the 2012 it's horrifying. championship. It's a horrifying thing. <laughs> Incredible things do happen in the <laughs> committee room. Right, well the final piece of action for the Inter-County lads this year is the... Thank you for being a friend. The final face-off. It's Leash's Colin Begley and MJ Tierney. Colin, you're first. What nightmare game would MJ most like to forget? I think the league final against Donegal. Um, he lost the plot there against the referee and missed probably the first three frees. Definitely uh, the league final against Donegal. Reason being, I was scrap. <laughs> Dish to dirt, Cullum. What is MJ's most annoying habit? Every once in a while, I come into my room, just uh, hey, beg what's happened, and he just stands in front of my mirror and lifts up his T-shirt and stare at himself for a few seconds and go, yeah, great shape. Very annoying. <laughs> probably maybe keep my clothes on. The opposite. The complete opposite. <laughs> Who is MJ's favourite GA analyst? Brawley, I think. Because uh, oh, he just loves the comments that he makes about leash footballers. Joe Brawley, I'd say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he loves the leash boys. He so. loves leash. Good friend of mine. <laughs> Your turn, MJ. Which Hollywood star would play Beggs in a movie of his life? I suppose Beggs would like to think someone like Bradley Cooper or Pierce Brosnan or someone, but uh, I'll stick Sasha Baron Cohen in because they've both got that kind of thing with their nose. Bradley Cooper, I'd say. Yeah, similar style, similar looks. Who would you say? Sasha Baron Cohen, the nose. That's harsh. I'm very sensitive about my nose. What is Cullum's most annoying saying? <laughs> Google me. <laughs> Google me, other. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> and who is the manager's favourite? Oh, definitely Beggs. Beggs is a pet. Mr. Australia is number one. <laughs> me? He likes you too, MJ, I'm sure. I hope so. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Good crack there. Colm and the rest of the Irish team play Australia in the International Room Goal of the Year. Since you're the man of the match in the All-Ireland Final, Kevin Nolan, it's your honour. Uh, the panel, against, against my will now anyway, uh, went with Darren O'Sullivan's goal, uh, goal D against Limerick. That was, and there were serious contenders play. because we two from Darren O'Sullivan, one from Eamon Callaghan and one from James McCarthy, but you've gone with... Darren O'Sullivan. Darren O'Sullivan. Limerick, against Limerick. Goal D. Goal D. What was so special about it? I just th think the uniqueness of it. Um, just for the, the hand pass in low enough and behind him as well. And he just sort of soccer styled it back heel into the net. And I think if you look, you see all the, the surprise and all the defenders, they actually didn't know what happened. The goalkeeper as well just left. You know, stuck to the ground. Couldn't move. Yeah, well, I think the, the other goals, uh, even though they're all fantastic goals, I think, you know, they've different players in different seasons and mm. different years have scored goals like that. I don't think there's ever been a goal I've scored in Crow yeah. Park like that. So I think for yeah. uniqueness, it's it kind of it kind of had to get it really, didn't it? It's just a goal that makes you smile like when you yeah. see it. It's just so audacious yeah, yeah. to have a goal and the skill the skill and everything just yeah. in the Well, you sound very united now, live on television. Yeah. Well, was yeah. this <laughs> unanimous decision? No, it was Well, I, I, I'd gone with James McCarthy's goal just because of the importance for us. Yeah. Um, we were struggling at the time against Wexford and we were lucky enough to get a goal. Mossy hit a ball in and... Uh, Masterson, yeah. fortunately for us, went to fist it out and went yeah. to, 
into the back of the net off their, the full-back's head and, you know, just the importance of that goal and the fact that it was his first year in the squad mm -hmm. and, again, he had an exceptional year as well and, you know, we, the sort of cap that came and off for us. The more you looked at the Emin Callaghan goal, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the better it got. Yeah. Yeah, you know, even, mm. even the bounce inside last last one, and then the finish. Like, well, know. Kevin wasn't going to pick that. It was his missed tackle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was. It was. I should have felt him further out <laughs> yeah. the pitch now. But again, to score a goal against that defence, you know, it, was, it, it wasn't <laughs> yeah, something. Pause yeah. There was no sign from anywhere. <laughs> the Mead Dublin rivalry is still evident here, right? So the committee room football goal of the year 2011 is Darren O'Sullivan against Limerick. Well done to you. Uh, Darren. Now your turn, uh, Mick. We saw the contenders in the hurling. By the way, the football goal at the end, the public vote seems to be going against what we're hearing in the committee room. It's going for Eamon Callahan. But anyway, the hurling goals. You had Owen Kelly, you had uh, Joe Canning, you had really quality goals uh, there. Yeah, it was really, actually, it was a very difficult choice afterwards because they all had different qualities individually. But uh, at the end of it all, it was a, another goal D. We went for Richie Hogan in the All Ireland final against Tipperary. And why Richie Hogan's goal? Well, I mean, it was just, I suppose, it was the context, number one, in, in an All-Ireland final in a, in a very tight game. And even, even from Eddie Brennan's run here, like, I mean, the hand pass was perfect. And just the control handle hurley. And I mean, even if the, even if the block had got in, we, we'd be raving about the block now. And that tells you something about the quality of the finish. I mean, you could probably argue that it's one of the greatest goals you will ever see in an All-Ireland final. Possibly one of the greatest ones ever been scored in an All-Ireland final, I should say. Oh, oh. Um, just the quality... The, the skill, the, the context, the timing, the, even the contact that he got in the ball, he, he gave the, the goal, you know, a chance, it was a marvellous goal. So was this a unanimous decision? Uh, close enough one as well, I mean, it was mm. an exceptional piece of skill and he showed the power as well, you know, he fires the defender away and it's kind of a, it's a real trademark full forward goal where he just, you know, throws the defender out of the way and then turns and buries it in the net, so I mean, it, you know, really could have gone to it and Kevin, of course, wanted yeah. to pick the Dublin goal again. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Congratulations to Richie Hogan for winning the committee room hurling goal of the year 2011. Well done. Okay, we're nearly out of time, but don't forget on Sunday night you can see.